It started as a faint rumor drifting across the Gobi. Tales of wild horses returning, not as spirits, but as living creatures, the fabled Taki. In the secluded corners of distant villages, murmurs grew louder, carried by the ever-present desert breeze. Was it possible? Could the legendary wild horses, believed lost to time, truly be coming back? For countless years, these horses had disappeared, surviving only in memories and faded images. Their forms lingered in ancient cave art and the brittle pages of old storybooks, treasured by elders who shared stories of the Taki's power and spirit with eager young listeners. Then, the unthinkable happened. Scientists and officials revealed that Przewalski's horses, the last wild horses on Earth, would return to their native lands in China. The announcement spread like wildfire, stirring both hope and disbelief. After so many years, the Taki would once again roam the Gobi. This effort was more than a scientific mission. It was a cultural revival, a missing chapter restored. Excitement swept through the region. Children imagined herds thundering across the plains, their laughter echoing the wild freedom of the horses they dreamed about. Families gathered to share the news, their faces glowing with anticipation. Elders recounted tales of rugged, bristly-maned creatures, stories of endurance, grit, and the deep connection between people and their homeland. For them, the Taki's return was a living legend brought back to life. The land itself seemed ready for a new beginning. As the seasons changed, the desert hinted at renewal, fresh shoots breaking through the sand, wildflowers blossoming where none had grown in years. The promise of the horse's return brought hope for the earth as well. For the biologists, this was the culmination of years of dedication, choosing, transporting, and preparing the horses for their new home. Every step was crucial, from selecting each animal to the long trek across the desert. Their commitment was unwavering, fueled by the dream of wild herds once again shaping the step. Would these horses, raised in captivity, adapt to the wild? Could they recall the instincts of their ancestors, or would the harsh desert prove too much? Their first tentative steps into freedom were watched with anxious hope. The world looked on, wishing for a miracle. News teams documented every moment, while villagers and scientists stood together, united by hope and pride. Headlines worldwide shared the story of a species on the edge of a new chapter. This was about more than rescuing a species. It was about healing a landscape and reviving a legacy. The Taki's return offered not just survival, but the restoration of a wild spirit, echoing across the Gobi and far beyond. Who are these legendary animals? What makes them so unique, so enduring in the wild stories of the steppes? Psovalski's horses, with their distinctive dun coats and stiff, upright manes, look as if they've galloped straight out of ancient cave art. Their powerful build and striking features have inspired awe for centuries, and their image has been etched into the walls of prehistoric caves by early humans who once shared the land with them. Unlike domestic horses, Przewalski's horses have never been tamed. They are the last truly wild horse subspecies on Earth, perfectly adapted for survival in harsh, unforgiving environments. Their instincts remain sharp, their social bonds strong, and their bodies built for endurance and resilience. Once, vast herds roamed the endless grasslands of Central Asia, shaping the ecosystem with their constant grazing and movement. Their presence helped maintain the delicate balance of the steppe, supporting a rich web of life. But as human populations grew and settlements expanded, the horse's habitat began to shrink. Fences, roads, and agriculture carved up the land, leaving less and less space for wild creatures to roam. By 1969, the last wild Przewalski's horse disappeared from the steppe, leaving the land eerily silent. The once vibrant plains became empty, haunted by the memory of thundering hooves. Their absence sent shockwaves through the ecosystem. Without the horses, plants grew unchecked, biodiversity declined, and the land itself began to suffer. The steppe lost its balance, and many other species struggled to survive. Yet, hope was not lost. A handful of Przewalski's horses survived in captivity, thanks to the dedication of conservationists and scientists. These few individuals became the foundation for a global breeding effort, a last chance to save the species from extinction. Zoos and wildlife parks around the world joined forces, 
carefully managing the horses' genetics to preserve their wild heritage. International teams collaborated, sharing knowledge and resources to ensure the survival of this ancient lineage. For decades, the only place to see a Psowalski's horse was behind a fence, in zoos and reserves far from their ancestral home. But the dream of returning them to the wild never faded. Conservationists worked tirelessly, preparing for the day when these horses could once again run free. Finally, that dream began to take shape, as carefully planned reintroduction programs released the horses back onto the open steppe. Now, that dream is becoming reality. Herds of Travalski's horses once again thunder across the grasslands, their hooves beating a rhythm of hope and renewal. The Taki, as they are known in Mongolia, are finally coming home, restoring the wild spirit of the steppe and proving that with determination and care, even the rarest creatures can be given a second chance. The day of release was charged with anticipation. After a long journey and careful acclimation, the horses waited in a holding pen at the edge of the reserve. Scientists, officials, and local families gathered, offerings in hand, to witness history. The gate opened. For a moment, the horses hesitated, sniffing the air of their ancestral home. The lead stallion stepped forward, then the herd followed, hooves thudding softly on the sand. Suddenly, the stallion broke into a trot, then a gallop. The herd thundered after him, dust rising in their wake. They ran with explosive joy, not fear, a celebration of freedom. The crowd watched in silence, many with tears in their eyes. The ghosts were no longer ghosts. They were home. A new chapter had begun. The first weeks in the wild tested every instinct the herd possessed. Each sunrise brought new challenges, and every sunset was a small victory. The horses, once accustomed to the safety of enclosures, now faced the raw unpredictability of nature. The Gobi is unforgiving, scorching days that seemed endless, freezing nights that bit through their coats and water so scarce it became a daily quest. The land itself seemed to test their resolve, offering little comfort and demanding constant vigilance. Biologists watched from a distance, tracking the herd's movements with binoculars and GPS, but they intervened only when absolutely necessary. The horses had to learn to survive on their own, relying on instincts dulled by generations in captivity. The lead stallion, strong and determined, guided his family across endless stretches of sand and stone, always searching for the next patch of grass or hidden water source. His leadership was crucial, and the herd depended on his experience. After days without water, desperation set in. The stallion dug tirelessly in a dry riverbed, his hooves scraping at the earth until, finally, a muddy puddle appeared. The herd drank gratefully. Survival, rediscovered through persistence and instinct. The horses learned to graze on tough, wiry desert plants. Foals watched their mothers closely, mimicking every move, learning which plants to eat and how to find shelter from the wind. Every day was a lesson in adaptation and resilience. Social bonds reformed quickly. The stallion stood protectively at the edge of the group, while mares organized themselves around the foals, forming a living shield. The young ones learned not just from their mothers, but from the entire herd. Predators like wolves soon returned to the scene, their eyes always watching from the shadows. The stallion remained vigilant, ready to defend his family at a moment's notice, his presence a constant reassurance to the herd. Slowly, the horses rebuilt their ancient social structure. Instincts that had lain dormant for generations began to awaken. They communicated with subtle gestures and calls, rediscovering the language of the wild. Each day, they grew stronger, more confident, and more wild. Their muscles hardened, their senses sharpened, and their spirits soared as they galloped across the open desert. The desert was their teacher, shaping them with every challenge. The foals, especially, learned quickly, watching, imitating, and adapting to the harsh lessons of their new home. The herd was not just surviving, they were reclaiming their place in the wild, step by step, rediscovering what it meant to be truly free. The wild was calling them home, and with every sunrise, the herd answered that call with renewed strength and hope. The horse's return triggered a cascade of change. Their selective grazing trimmed dominant grasses, allowing wildflowers and delicate plants to flourish. Insects returned, 
bees, butterflies, followed by birds and lizards. The desert, once quiet, buzzed with new life. The horses dug for water, leaving oases for gazelles, foxes, and rodents. Their droppings fertilized the soil, dung beetles spread seeds, and the land grew richer. Local people noticed healthier pastures and the return of animals unseen for decades. Fears of competition with livestock faded. Instead, the horses revitalized the land. The Taki were not just surviving, they were healing the desert. The ancient stories were true. Horses and land are deeply connected. The hoofbeats were a drumbeat of renewal. The Gobi was waking up. The project's success exceeded all expectations. Biodiversity rebounded within a year, far faster than scientists predicted. The horses were the catalyst the desert needed. Challenges arose, wolves returned, preying on foals, but the stallion defended his herd fiercely. Predator and prey danced again on the steppe. The reserve became a source of local pride and ecotourism, bringing new income and opportunity. Conservation proved its economic value, uniting people and wildlife. Domestic and wild horses coexisted, herders watching the Taki with awe. The wild horses became a living symbol of heritage, a bridge to the past. The project restored not just nature, but community spirit. The Taki inspired hope for a sustainable future. The Gobi Project stunned the scientific world. Experts expected slow, fragile progress, but the ecosystem rebounded rapidly with minimal intervention. Zoo-bred horses, thought to have lost their wild instincts, quickly rediscovered survival skills, finding water, defending against wolves, choosing the right plants. It was as if the wildness was hardwired, waiting to be awakened. The horses triggered a trophic cascade, affecting plants, insects, birds, and soil health far beyond expectations. They proved to be a keystone species, holding the ecosystem together. The project forced a rethinking of what's possible in conservation. Extinct in the wild was no longer a permanent sentence. The horses didn't just meet expectations, they galloped past them. Nature, given a chance, can heal itself in ways we're only beginning to understand. The Pshavalski's horse story is a blueprint for hope. It shows that with planning, cooperation, and respect for local wisdom, we can restore what was lost. Rewilding works, not just for species, but for entire ecosystems. Keystone species like the Taki can trigger cascades of renewal. Conservation must be holistic, integrating science and traditional knowledge. Local herders' insights were vital to the project's success. True restoration is a partnership between people and nature. The wild horse's return is a symbol of resilience, of nature, and of us. Their hoofbeats echo a promise that healing is possible and the wild can return. This is the lesson of the Taki, a future where humans and wildlife thrive together.